Hi, people. This is Nettie. Um, I want to bring in a situation that is getting me pissed off. When I participate on those certain radio stations, they want me out, of course. Um, they say that I lie. They say that I'm dumb. They say they can't understand me. You know, they say a lot of things. I don't know what's there not to understand. I keep saying that the economy went down in 2006 and who was there was the popular party. Not the statehooders, not the independents. The independence party never have won a governing position. Okay, so it's just what they say is statehooders and colonists. The popular party and the statehooders are the PNP. They call me all this and they call me a liar and they say um, that I'm lying all the time. I want to prove to them wrong and I'm going to put the link down here. You know, because I'm getting sick and tired of their lies. I'm getting sick and tired of their come. They use my name and they rip it off apart and do whatever they want with my name. Okay? And then they say that they educated. Educated my eyes. Okay. So I'm going to read to you a piece of the information. You know, this is the former, former secretary, treasury secretary, Lawrence Summers. Oh boy. Former Treasury Secretary Lawrence Summers said to the Bloom, Bloomberg's News that Puerto Rico's bonds are trading as the junkiest of the junk. That the beating that they have taken in recent months stems from a lack of investors' confidence on the island's economy, which has been shrinking since 2006. Which has been shrinking since 2006. Where the heck did I lie here? Okay. So let's get this in proportion. Um, the former Treasury Secretary already said it. It is trading in of the in the junk as the junkiest um, bonds. The, the bonds are the junkiest of the junk. In other words, okay. And it's been getting a beating. The investors don't trust um, Puerto Rico. As simple as that. Look, if I am an investor, you know, I think I, I have logic in this. You don't need to have a master degree in economics. If I am an investor, why would I invest in a place where you're not too sure? Why would I invest in a place that you can't trust? You see? Um, it doesn't take much intelligence here you know they don't want to invest in Puerto Rico first of all the government has the habit going over there in the state say one thing and saying another thing here right now he told the people of Puerto Rico oh yes I saw that we are on the road to get to to get up there you know I solved the economic problem heck no he didn't solve in a couple of months 70 billion dollars 70 billion that's what Puerto Rico owes you know, and the state, uh, how do you call it? And they over there saying that they solved the problem? Okay, it's, it's selling as junk. One thing that happened also, they, um, re they represented, they told the investors, I'm trying to get this in my head. They told the investors there was a good deal to invest in Puerto Rico. Uh, they sue him right now. They sue him. For mispre mispresentation, that's what it is. They saw him because of mispresentation. Now people know this. The investor is going to tell the other investor, "Hey, man, this will happen to me." Now, would you invest in a place where where people are suing because you misrepresented things, and now they lost? One person only said he had to take out. He lost fifty one thousand dollars. I think it was or five hundred thousand dollars, something like that. I think it was $500,000, half a million dollars. Um, he lost it. An elderly person who tried to invest and sadly enough, he lost it. He's one of the sewers, you know, the one that are suing. Okay, so saying this, you know, um, all this thing, the, the economic of Puerto Rico has been shrinking since 2006. What is that telling you? I've been saying this to the people of Puerto Rico. It was in 2006. Let's cut this for the people who doesn't know. 
Okay, I already said that the popular party is the ones that like the colony. They like what they got, of course. Um, the government sends in money. Yeah, your hard-working money. And they give them coupons. They give them Section 8. They give them everything. Everything, you know. There's people that I've seen. Their daughters get pregnant at 15. Oh, no te preocupes, mija. We're going to get you this and we're going to get you that. They don't tell her like I did to my daughter when she got pregnant. I tell you, you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna help you with your child, but you're not gonna get out of school. Okay? You gotta keep going to school. My daughter graduated with Manum Cum Laude. I think that's I don't know how you say it in English. I think it's the same way. From criminal justice. Criminal justice. She got it right now. She got a brand new car. You know, she's doing great because she had a mother who supported her. A mother who says, "I'm here for you." You know, I didn't tell her, oh, wow, girl, you're 19. You could get, you could go to the government and get coupons and get um, Section 8. Or go to a, a, how you call it over there? Oh, Caserio, they call it here. Um, projects. You could go take one of those projects. No. I tell her, you know what? I'm going to, I'm going to say, I'm going to take care of your daughter. But you got to keep on going to school. You got to finish that dream you had. She graduated. She graduated. She's working. She's doing great. Because she had a mother and a father who pushed her to go on. I was going to help her. And I still help her because she works. And sometimes she doesn't have somebody to take care of the kid. And I take care of her. You know. Okay. So the popular party, that's the one that is likes this colony stuff. You know, likes the money, the federal money. They don't want to be like them. Oh, no. I'm not American. I'm not Puerto Rican. Oh, yeah. But when the American says, here, a couple of books, they're like this, stretching their hand. Oh, yeah, give it to me. That's them. Okay. So, um, in the year 2000, 2004, was the popular party, which was Sila Maria Calderon, from 2000 to 2004. From 2004 to 2008, was Aníbal Acevedo Vidal. In 2006, Roselló was out years already, and Fortuño wasn't in yet. Fortuño, when he came in in 2012, he found all this, this problem, economical problem, which started in 2006, and Aníbal was there in 2006. He left in 2008. Now, how did they blame us, the statehooders, for the economy? Oh, yes, we had some bad problems. Like Fajardo, who stole from education, he went to jail. But he had a partner, Glass, who was from the popular party. That nigga, they just, they just gave him, um, how you call it? They just gave him immunity. Bye. Let's see Puerto Rico, and he's gone. The other guy who took, um, how you call it, the, the retirement of Puerto Rico, invested it, supposedly invested it. He invested it and he lost all the money. Millions of dollars. Oh, but it's our fault. The statehood is that that's our fault. Because that popular party decided to go over there and play games with the people's money and they lost it. That's what he says. And he's gone from Puerto Rico too. But that's not what they tell the people. Okay, so me saying this to make a show because it's already got over ten minutes. Saying this. I want to prove the people of Puerto Rico who is a liar, who is dumb, and who doesn't study what they should study. When you tell them, hey, prove to me you've done better than the, than the statehooders, they go, oh, you married in 1950-something, and that. Come on. He's dead. Long gone dead. You know, tell me what you're doing now. But that's how they work. They lie, and when they can't lie, when they can't, when they find themselves stuck, they insult you, they try to humiliate you, and hey, I am not leaving the radio station. So you're gonna have to live with that. That's all, folks. And until next time, bye.